Do you ever worry about having enough? What a question, Pastor. We all have times when we think there is simply not enough, or there won't be enough, whether in the short term or in the foreseeable future. You know, I agree, especially if we think of the runs on toilet paper and hand sanitizer and cleaning wipes, to mention things that have just recently been on everybody's shopping list. But that's not the enough I'm thinking about today. I'm thinking instead about God's provision, his rich, overwhelming provision for us. Now some of you might be questioning that statement. You think about your life, especially in these days of turmoil and pandemic. Maybe you've experienced the shortages that I mentioned. Maybe you've seen a marked reduction in your work hours or a drastic increase so much that it's leading your family to wonder if they'll ever see you in a normal time again. Maybe the investments you've counted on for your retirement have taken a major hit. Maybe you know someone who's been affected by the violence we see on our screens. The first hearers of Jesus' parables were also living in a time of turmoil. They were looking, praying, seeking the long-promised Messiah. And here, they were hearing that the kingdom could be seen and understood in the normal things of life. How could this be? They, they understood what a mustard seed was. A tiny, oh so tiny seed, but a fast growing one, a shrub, and some even saw it in the weed, which would break your orderly field. And yes, shelter birds or love it. In scripture, there were many cases where love it represented sin. And in fact, in many, but not all, sacrifices and offerings, it was absolutely prohibited. Here we see where a tiny bit of leaven could be worked into three measures of flour. And by the way, three measures of flour could produce 100 loaves of bread. The leaven of the kingdom brings forth incredible growth. Just like the tiny mustard seed becomes a sheltering tree in the field. We can't miss, though, the part about provision that the mustard seed brings to the birds. And elsewhere, birds are likened to the followers of God. We also see the bounty, that small amount of leather producing a hundred loaves, Ah, that could be used to nourish physically, but it could also be used to nourish spiritually at the table. Yet how? How do we understand the account of the trickster, Jacob, being related to these accounts? It seems very out of place, doesn't it? You remember that Jacob tricked both his brother and his father 
and was now on the road while returning to his mother's family in search of a wife. And there was no indication he was planning on leaving anytime soon. Was it just convenient for him to stay away? He was certainly safer there. Or had he really found his true love as his father Isaac had in Rebecca? If we kept reading, we would discover that God was with him and caused him to be an absolutely incredibly productive shepherd, much to his father-in-law Laban's displeasure. Paul's message to the Romans speaks more directly to our understanding of the kingdom of God. The passage is often used to describe how the Spirit helps us when we simply don't know how to pray, what to say, what to ask for. And that's something that I suspect that each and every one of us has encountered at some time. I also believe there is an assurance that even when we don't know what to say, the Spirit will help us if we are open to the Spirit's leading and if we ask. You may remember that Jesus told his followers not to be worried what they were to say when they were brought before authorities because the Spirit will guide them, will guide us. Yet another interpretation could be that Paul was saying that even believers don't know God's will which they should be seeking when they pray. Before we reject this, let's remember that we are in all things called to seek God's will and then to do it. It's the leading of the Spirit and the connectedness which the Spirit brings that allows us to learn God's will. This might be a little bit touchy to hear, but do we spend time in silence when we pray? Or do we just rapid fire our requests and end with a very hasty Amen? Do we wait for the Spirit to move our heart to tell or show us what to do? Back to our Gospel reading. We find Jesus was speaking to his earliest followers. And they were curious about the dawning of the kingdom of God. Now we look back and wonder. We know John's account of heaven, which was revealed to him at the island of Patmos. What Jesus is describing doesn't sound anything like that. In fact, how many of us would like to live in a tree like a bird? Hmm. I don't know. That sounds a bit like fun, doesn't it? Sort of like the Swiss Family Robinson. But Jesus isn't talking about a literal tree as heaven. Remember, this is a parable, an earthly story with a heavenly meaning. He uses a mustard seed, a very common tiny seed, which when it grows produces a huge shrub, big enough to shelter birds. The kingdom isn't something far off, but it's something present. 
So the Word, the Word of God, might seem to be a tiny thing. The group of believers might seem to be a very tiny gathering when compared to the whole world. Seemingly insignificant. But the kingdom, the kingdom here and now grows incredibly unto the leadership of our Lord and our Savior, unto the growth given by God. If we get stuck on the idea of place, the next two parables give us greater clarity. In many ways, they're similar. Both of the subjects seek out things of great value and pursue them rigorously, giving up everything to obtain the field or the pearl. We should note that the two seekers, though, are from two very different backgrounds. One is a tenant farmer, likely a subsistence farmer at that, getting the wherewithal to purchase the field had to be an incredible feat. And yet, he sacrificed everything to do it. He sacrificed everything he had for the kingdom. The merchant, likely he was well-to-do, maybe even wealthy. He had a way to be selling pearls. Yet he also sacrificed everything for the kingdom because he saw the incredible value in that pearl in the kingdom. He held nothing back, just as the farmer held nothing back. Jesus asks, his disciples, if they understand what he is telling them, the risks, the labor, the dedication that is involved, they answer yes. He doesn't point out that they do not fully understand him, but he also doesn't call into judgment their response. And I think that tells us that he can use anyone, anyone, who is willing to follow him, no matter how imperfectly it may be, no matter how imperfectly they understand what is expected of them. Stepping out in faith is what every believer is called to do. And then he brings the final image of the scribes. The scribes of the day literally copied letter by letter, not word by word. Each mark that they made had to be carefully examined to ensure the copy and the original were exactly the same. It took years of study and practice before a scribe could be entrusted with such responsibility. We are the scribes. We need to remember the past, God's faithful actions throughout the ages, and the present as God continues to act in our lives and the lives of God's people. And we need to be open to the future, to God's future activities in our world. We need to be diligent in studying and relaying what we have learned. This speaks of the responsibility
responsibility that we all have to share the good news. Sharing is not optional. But we need to learn the scriptures by study, and most importantly, by going to the Holy Spirit for insight on what we read and how we hear it. And the Holy Spirit will strengthen us as we walk following our Lord and Savior. We are promised that nothing can separate us from God. Nothing. As Paul says, who will separate us from the love of Christ? Will hardship or distress or persecution or famine or nakedness or peril or sword? And then he answers the question. No. In all these things we are more than conquerors through him who loved us. For I am convinced that neither death nor life, nor angels, nor rulers, nor things present, nor things to come, nor powers, nor height, nor depth, nor anything else in all creation will be able to separate us from the love of God in Christ Jesus our Lord. Amen and Amen.